Mike's Daily Podcast. FF episode 976. Hello, it's Mike Matthews broadcasting from Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Podcastro Valley. Today, the finale of my Into an Interview with the singer-songwriter from Massachusetts, Frankie Denol. Plus, we hear from Madame Rutabaga Valentino and Bison Bentley. Plus, I sing some song at the beginning. Mike's Daily Podcast. Let's see. What am I going to sing about? Let me look in the mirror and look for... Ah! I found something. Mike's Daily Podcast. So at some point, we all have to accept what we call wrinkles. Looking at our faces is saying where those skin cells have decided to line up with lines. Are you fine with lines, oh friend of mine? Can you see beyond the Botox, Botox ads and oil of Olay tries... Take money from your account. Mike's Daily Podcast. Well, you should hail those lines. They show the road you've been on. And uh, maybe Mike's some of the good times. Daily Age is a state of mind. Podcast. Wrinkles befall us all. Yeah. They become a new friend that stands by your side till the end. Thank you. I'm done with my little rhyme. But yeah. Wrinkles. So I've noticed lately that my wrinkles are taking an interesting shape. Apparently, uh, I've done a lot of squinting in my life, and my face is structured in such a way that I've got wrinkles that are going to go all the way. They're kind of like massive crow lines, crow's feet, whatever you call those. They're they're surrounding my entire face, and I'm turning into kind of like that thing when you look at the, uh, the earth, and the magnetic fields around the earth and when the sun hits the earth and those lines and stuff you see, I don't know what the astronomical term is for it, but that's what I got on my face. I'm really excited about that because I can look in the mirror and think of astronomy. Maybe I should have pursued that instead of communications, but I enjoy the communicating and this world we live in in which communicating is, you know, it's so weird, isn't it? We live in a world of communication, and they've always told us from years back that the world is going to get only going to get smaller with technology. And now people can podcast another four. Look, I just walked in. Oh my god! Hello, I got my sister's mad dog. Too big. Oh my gosh! Why are you having a cow? You just interrupted my train of thought. I am sorry, Michael Mass. You continue. Uh, I was saying that communication has been enhanced by things like podcasting. And listening to stuff on your smartphone. I think it's... Michael Master, I wanted to tell you something. Oh my God, you interrupted me again. What is it? Michael Master, I think that communication is wonderful. Continue. Uh, yeah, and there's uh, all these other things that you can... You know, the computer, obviously, and the World Wide Web, the Internet. We're all sort of... Conne- Michael Master, I wanted to tell you what? Oh my gosh, you're like a little child. I know, but I've lived forever. Yes, you're immortal, Madame Rutabaga. It is true. What do you think about wrinkles? I look at them and I think I need to take them away. But I don't. You're afraid of Botox? Michael Masu, I am not afraid of anything. But yeah, injecting a botulation plague, bubonic plague into my face kind of scares me. Ooh. I understand. So that's something, is, is something like, well, you know, like Trump. He's trying so desperately to hold on to his youth. And when he was a younger man, quite a good looking guy, he didn't always have the. Oh, look who else is locked in! Hello there, Mike. This is Valentino the Apache and Din Din. And this is Bison Bentley. Do you know that? Mike, you began speaking about Trump, which I do not like him because he is getting in the way of the George Christie, and we want George Christie to win day. Yeah, George Christie 2000 dick thing. Do you know that? With Palin. Oh, that's never going to happen, but yeah, it's an interesting combination. So you're saying that because Donald Trump is a richer, more well-known version of of, uh, Chris Christie, not George Christie... Did I, say, I always say George Christie. I, that's what, what we call a cross-wire word. 
because uh, I get these two words crossed in my head, the wires crossed. Back when I lived in Ventura, there was a guy who was the head of the Hell's Angels who always got into the newspaper. His name was George Christie. And that will forever mix up my mind. Ah, Hell's Angels! Uh, with Chris Christie. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, Chris Christie Day. Chris Christie, got it. Okay. And so, yeah, Donald Trump is dropping in the polls, so you should be happy, Valentino. Yeah, I'm so glad there, Chris Christie. And, and that means that Ted Cruz, the disgruntled fiddle player who was on last show, he, he's a big fan of Ted Cruz and Rand Paul together. Rand Cruiser, he likes to call them. Ted Cruz, because he's big with the evangelicals. Evangelical push the morality on everybody else's locals. Uh, the, and Ted Cruz is all about that. Even though he looks like a little Pillsbury doughboy with uh, dyed brown hair. And he is so... I, I, I just... He's, his convictions are all messed up. But Mike, he's, he's supposed to be... He's all into Christianity and everything. And that's what America was founded on was Christianity. I'm, I'm reading the lines of some other character that's not on today's show. That's ultra right wing. Mike, I will take that part. Okay, go ahead. Uh, uh, they, Mike, that uh, Ted Cruz is all about Christianity and stuff, Dave. Well, very good. All right, well, so that'll be interesting. He probably won't win, barring another humongous scandal that for some reason this time Hillary won't be able to get around. People call her Hillcat. Because she's like a cat, like she can, you know, outmaneuver anything. Like, zoom, zoom. But what I also found interesting is that I get uh, texts or emails. I don't get texts, I just get the emails. But I'm, I'm looking at it via my s- smartphone. And it's smarter than the average phone. Joe Biden is sending me emails. And he says in the subject line, listen up, Mike. And then uh, Obama earlier had emailed me and said, Hey, Mike. They like to put my name in, in the subject bars. And I, I don't know why they do that. What, maybe because it catches my attention. And here's what Joe had to say. He says, I'll tell you something, Mike. I'm proud to be a Democrat. We're about giving people a fair shot and a fair shake. We're about optimism, equality, and embracing change. At our best, we fight to move the country forward and against the forces trying to hold us back. And I had the great honor of spending the past seven years in what I know will go down in history as one of the most consequential administrations of all time. And now he goes on about a bunch... Of, oh, he wants me to donate! Ugh. Like, yeah. Like I would donate to any politician. There are definitely some politicians I won't donate to, but... Um, Madam Rutabaga? Yes, Michael Masu. Did you, uh, uh, want to say anything? No, Michael Matthew. How about you, Valentino? No, got nothing. Buy some Bentley? Eh! Do you know that? All right, well, that means I have to run down my list really quick. And let's look at uh, some random posts from Mike Matthews. Ridiculous random posts. My ridiculous random posts. Okay, here we go. Hot students on C-SPAN. Watching C-SPAN, and, you, and you're, you're, you're watching... Yeah, because I watch it for the educational stuff. Except for when there's a guy or a woman lecturing in front of a bunch of college students. And the, the entire college student is a bunch of women that are hot. Hot university. Yes, that's a little creepy, Mike, but still... Uh, Emory University, for some reason, all of their uh, f- student body are quite lovely on the, and it's very distracting to keep focused on the lecture. <sighs> okay, another interesting, uh, random, ridiculous post. Tim Tebow and former Miss USA breaking up because Tim Tebow is remaining abstinent and former Miss USA not getting enough sex. My question to you is, who's Tim Tebow? I don't watch sports. I have no idea. But this guy apparently is really dedicated. 
Or he finds Miss USA is unpleasant in some manner. Her looks are not appealing. And that she should not be sitting in the audience of a C-SPAN lecture. And then finally, George Harrison. Today, he passed away on this date 14 years ago. And I mentioned George Harrison as I interviewed Frankie Denall. Uh, the first part of our into an interview and uh, George Harrison just had this really he he did so many interesting things in his solo career his music went from the ultra ultra pop to the ultra ultra spiritual and contemplating eastern religions and all of that so if you don't listen to any George Harrison uh, you should pick up something and listen to his stuff fantastic so we're going to talk to Frankie Denall, who, even though I think he sounds a little like George Harrison, uh, Frankie pointed out more John Lennon. So whatever the case, he's in good company with the sounds of the Beatles uh, permeating his music. But I uh, want to remind you that you can go to our website, mikesdailypodcast.com, and find all kinds of interesting places to listen to the show and also where we all are on the social media. And share the show with your friends through social media. Also, if you'd like to help us out through the uh, Amazon, if you go click on that Amazon link, you'll find out what the Amazon deal of the day is. And then also you'll be able to buy something through Amazon. And if you do buy anything on Amazon, that helps us out if you go through that link at mikesdailypodcast.com. And if you'd like to help support the show through PayPal and become an inglorious Mike's Daily Podcaster, get a special greeting from all of the cafe characters here at Cafe Anyway, you can find that at Mike's Daily Podcast. Podcast.com, as well as my blog, the daily podcast picture, and all my past interviews. Let's get to the finale of the Frankie Denall interview. Into an interview. I'm speaking with Frankie Denall. He has a couple new songs out. His single, Butterfly, we heard on the last show. We actually have an album out on iTunes and Amazon, all the um, places where you can get it uh, digitally downloaded. It's called Purpose for Life. Ah, and the, yeah, and the album is called "Who Are You?" Ah, like the Who? Well, yeah, I get that sometimes, but it's just asking you a question: Who are you? <laughs> ah, yes, and I there's yeah, and a song from that. And when we came into uh, Shine On Records, we launched out with "Butterfly," so we took it from there as our first single. I'm ah. thinking that our follow-up song would probably be "If You Died Today," but I won't jump the gun on that. <laughs> just a little, little sideways, we'll say it. <laughs> Build some excitement. Purpose for Life is the name of the band? Yes. And Yeah, tell me about the, and the band Purpose. Okay, well, Purpose was for like uh, 30 years, you might say. And then um, when we put out this album, there was so many uh, Google searches with the name Purpose that it was cluttered. So we didn't think we'd be found. So uh, the record industry, uh, Jeffrey Collins, who used to work with the Beatles and Rolling Stones and uh, Led Zeppelin as a booking agent, uh, has famous records down in Florida, and uh, he said, "Well, when we put up the digital distribution together, uh, we're going to just call it Purpose for Life. Uh-huh. How do you like that?" And I said, "You know what? Just do it, and we'll just change our name to that." And it still sounds like a life sentence, and we like it. <laughs> <laughs> Purpose for Life, and it's it's got all kinds of com- connotation con connotations. <laughs> that all right? We'll go with that one, if I may. <laughs> Yeah. And contemplations. There we go. Well, how did you get into songwriting in the beginning? Oh, boy. I think, well, as far as songwriting goes, just it just came natural. My grandmother was a poet, and she was always writing little poet things and whatever, little poems and whatnot. And I saw her talent, and it just attracted me. And then when I started listening to literally the Beatles, I used to sit on the steps when I was like eight years old in the basement and shut the door, and it was my own world, and i just get lost on the radio. And when I heard the way that they had put things together and how it could take you out of yourself and into some other realm, it was so attractive. I said, that's the way I want to be. I wasn't into sports. I wasn't into politics. It was just like, give me music and let me take somebody and take them into a new place or change their mood. It was my way of uh, entertaining, and I loved it. So I started writing songs probably when I was 10 years old and then uh, really got serious when I was about 20. Started writing my first in probably 1977, 78. Is there like a a moment you remember performing back then that remains vivid in your mind? Yes, I was probably in uh, seventh grade and in front of when they used to have dancers back then. I guess I don't know if they still do that now, <laughs> hip hop uh, in the clubs. But in, in uh, the junior high, I got up on stage and played my own song that I wrote in front of the whole dance, uh, you know, dance night. 
gang, you know, like all the different uh, kids that had joined up for listening to the uh, record players and stuff at the time, you know. Yeah. But I got to perform my song, and I loved it. So it became an instant star. <laughs> wow, right there. It's seventh yeah. grade. Yep, that's it. All the girls, baby. It was it was like it was all <laughs> up, uphill from there. And Frankie, so is there anyone today or anyone in recent memory that you were like, oh, that that's a good group? Yeah, now I like Porcupine Tree, Tame Impalas, or like uh, Ray Lamontagne, um, Black Rebel, Motorcycle. Ooh. Just the name of a few, you know. And then sometimes the uh, ones that are still around, you know. Obviously, Steven Tyler is uh, way up there on the hit list. You know, even though even though he's jumping into country now, I think that's a good move. He's a smart guy uh, to do that, and I think I, to be multi-genre nowadays is the way to go. And put yourself in different movies and different clips like that. It's not just about doing a song anymore and touring on it. To spread it really wide, you know. You live in how do you say the name of your town? Raynham. How long have you lived in Raynham? Uh, a few years now. I, I like I said, I lived in Plymouth. I lived in New Bedford uh, and Dartmouth. Oh, geez, don't get me started. I've lived in like thirty-eight different places. So, wow. it's, oh man, it was like I can't go into it. I lived out, like I said, in San Jose. I lived three times in Florida. So that's why they call me the Breeze. It's in the <laughs> song. <laughs> Let's play the song "Whoa." And where did "Whoa" come from? Well. That song, if you listen closely, that's a heartache song of just feeling we are empty before God and we really aren't anything to uh, brag about, to accomplish anything. And it struck me one day as as like all the needs out there. And to be able to be a part of that, it kind of really hit the soft spot in my heart. You know, I was just crying out and... um, and I'm not ashamed of it, man. It just it just wrecks me how bad things can be. And to be a part of it, I'm given hope, you know, and I'm trying to encourage everybody with it. So maybe so, you can relate to the song, you know. I know that I can. So woe has many connotations. It's kind of a, all right, picture God walks into the room. You're going to be struck with what is called woe because it's like, whoa, I got to get out of here. Or, or, <laughs> or, like you, or else you woe on your face and you go, whoa, that hurt. Because... <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you could go that way. Did the song help you when you wrote it? Yeah. You know, these songs, most of the time, I think a songwriter should. Uh, maybe it doesn't happen all the time. But as far as I'm concerned, most of these songs are something that I've worked out in myself. They're like a diary. They're like, uh, I don't know for another word but uh, offhand, but pretty but much uh, I'm revealing my inner life, you know, and the struggles or, or the pleasures I'm going through. And I wanted to share them, you know. Maybe somebody else can go through it and enjoy it, you know. Uh, so, yeah. At the end, the song is about being lifted up. It is a place where you, you could be wrecked, but there's hope. And your wife sings on this one, too? Oh, yeah. Awesome. There's very little that she doesn't sing in, except some of the new stuff that she hasn't practiced up with me. She goes, I haven't done that song with you yet. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, I kind of like steal them for a little while. You'll hear a lot of the solo work is on the SoundCloud and YouTube because we haven't gone into the studio yet. But oh. she's always with me. She's my harmony, and she plays a major role in adding to it. And let's play Whoa. Thanks for being on Mike's Daily Podcast. Thank you, Mike. I enjoyed it a lot, man. So thank you.
and all. Yes, we go outside a cafe anyway. We bring you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley. And here's today's podcast picture. And the podcast picture is of Frankie. You can see what he looks like there right now at mikesdailypodcast.com. And yeah, that's what we do here is show pictures of people. Michael Matthew, I believe you have a picture of me on the website. Yes. And it is a drawing of me. Yes. Do you think I could sit in the student body of the every university where they are all very pretty? Yes, you're very pretty too. You would fit right in. Thank you. And then, you know, you could uh, slap the student that's falling asleep in class when they should be awake, listening intently to the lecture. I will smack them. Wonderful. Mike. So what can I do to help the Donald Trump get lower day in the poll ratings day? Well, you could go and tell every single newspaper, news media outlet uh, to stop talking about him, including me. Okay, stop talking about him. I will. I'm done. And that's the end of the show. Next show, it is the return of the much-loved feature. This is interesting, where we'll look at some interesting news stories. Plus, hear from Shelley Shuhart, Floyd the Floor Man, and John Deere the Engineer. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.